Welcome back to another episode on Connie Celica, our 1977 Toyota Celica. We are not starting the car today, but what we are doing is installing an oil cooler from Coyorad, an electric fan from Excessive Manufacturing. We're gonna plumb it all up with a bunch of goodies from Vibrant Performance. This is the fan shroud, or rad shroud, I should say, from Excessive Manufacturing for early first gen Celicas. So like 71 to 75, something in that range. And it turns out that the 76 and 77 radiator, and thus the shroud that it would require, is slightly larger. So you can see here, they went to a slightly bigger rad in 76 and 77, which uh, I didn't know about when I ordered this. But luckily, once we tried to fit this up and it didn't fit, I contacted him. He had a shroud from a stock 76 or 77 uh, Celica that he could take dimensions off of. And now we can bolt up the fan that we also got from Excessive. So you can buy this separately or you can buy it with a fan as a kit from, from their website. I should explain that this is designed specifically for Koyo Rad's radiators. Their RA21 or early first gen one is tested in lots of cars and fits up perfectly to the radiator for that application. But I think this is the first time that Excessive's made one for this late first gen uh, rad, which is slightly larger. So we did have to do some tuning of clearance to the upper neck here, which might be a function of the fact that we, re we redid that a bit at Vibrant Performance when we did this whole custom water pipe setup. And the lower neck was also a little too close for comfort, so we clearance that out a bit here. But now it fits. So we can bolt it up using these, uh, these outer bolt hole locations that line up perfectly on the back side of the rad. We will have a, an air gap along the top of the bottom, which Excessive recommends filling with foam for maximum efficiency. Look at the concentration, everybody. Digging in. I want to make this look good for you, DP. <laughs> yeah, it's not about me. This is about your OCD, buddy. Oh, Let's be look honest. At, look at that. You just don't like a job that's done Sweet. crooked. That is nice. Straight foam work. That right is there. good. Woo. Now we'll just trim the corner off here. We'll do the bottom and four bolts and we're done, right? Man, pretty sweet. It does fit up remarkably well for what I would call a prototype piece. Yeah, it does. I think. Uh, if we got really anal, we could like seal up all these little holes, but the front side of the rad seals up really well. Yeah, I think on we're this okay. car, like the air's got nowhere to go but through the rad. There's so. plenty of rad, and I mean like. You know, whoever did this sweet bang up foam job here. Yeah, that's pro That's going to really seal this whole yeah, that thing is, up. That so is. when you tighten it down. Yeah, that's pro spec. It's going to be right against there. Yeah, no, top marks, BT, top marks. All right, well, with this job done, I think we can move on to the oil cooler. Well, we are just uh, brainstorming a little bit here about where to mount up our little 15 row Koyo Rad oil cooler. This is part of their universal line of oil coolers. They come in, I think, four sizes. This motor at its power level of 15 row is a nice size. And I also like the fact that it sits down perfectly in this sort of low point on the front cross member. So I think it's gonna make for a really easy installation. So this is built using Koyo's advanced drawn cup construction. I have no idea what that means, Peter, but I do know that it's super heavy duty. It's been pressure tested to, to 10 bar and deformation tested to 35 bar, which means I could smash you on the head with it. You would die and it would not deform, it could continue doing its... So it'll handle a crash. It'll handle Not a... that this will ever crash, but... I, I better not crash, Connie. That would no. be a, a horrible thing. So anyway, rugged uh, cooler. All we have to do is mount it up, build those vibrant lines, and then uh, a sandwich adapter to the block, which... Is on order. It's, on, it's in the mail. It is in the mail, You yeah. may see it in this episode if we take long enough building these lines. PT went and bought himself this fancy Rivnut set. Look at this thing. It is brand new and ready for battle. So we have just marked a couple of holes here on the lower cross member. We're gonna drill those out, put the rib nuts in there, and then do the other side. And I should say, if you uh, are interested in this pretty excellent Astro rib nut gun, yeah. or rib nut tool, it's a serious set. it is available from Amazon. I've been buying everything on Amazon. You're the Amazon man so these the, days, uh, right? There will be a link in the description. Okay. I chirped you good enough that you, you're doing the pilot hole. I love it. Well, it did walk. I finally if won the, If the bit walks, here. then we yeah, know we're in trouble. Right. As you can see, we had to remove the radiator because 
The downside to a tool like this is it works exceptionally well, but it requires a lot of space. And uh, as you can see, we weren't necessarily gonna fit this properly. So well, it was only like five minutes to remove the rad, but let me demonstrate how this wonderful tool works. You just put the rib nut in place, you pull up and done. Just like that, we have ourselves a provision for an M6 nut. So we've got both of them in there. Now we got the one side bolted in place, some little rubber isolation in there so that we don't vibrate this oil cooler to death. And Pete's just marking the other side out here. I think it's pretty good though. Yeah, it does seem good. Like that's... Yeah, it's got a bit of movement. Got a, enough movement. I mean, you can tighten nice it, loosen it. You can do whatever you'd like to yep. determine how much isolation you want. So. Man, it is on there good. Check out my Prospect wrench, PT. I think it's pretty badass, huh? We've got all the specialty tools coming in. This is courtesy, courtesy of Vibrant Performance. Uh, so this will let us tighten this AN ORB style fitting. So ORB means O-ring boss. So it's got an O-ring on the bottom here, which will allow it to seal up into the coil oil cooler nicely. So the recommended way of tightening, tightening these, as far as we can tell from doing a little research on the internet, including watching a sicky video about, I think their fuel line kit. Um, and they're suggesting that you just tighten it finger tight and then do another eighth to quarter of a turn with a wrench and you should be good to go. So I'll do, and let's say we'll do a quarter turn. Just about that. And that should be good. So I'll do the same over here. These are vibrant fit fittings, by the way, I should mention. Um, this being a universal oil cooler, it doesn't come with any, any fittings, but if you go to Coil Rad's website, they do list all the fittings in the world that will fit on their oil coolers, including these vibrant fittings. So that's what we've opted for here. Did you tighten this one already, PT? I did, yeah. Oh man, we're ready to go. Just trying to figure out how to route these lines, and it's looking like, uh, our pass-through idea here is working out very nicely. That Better than I expected. Like designed for this, wasn't it? It is, it is. And uh, it will actually pass a dash 10 fitting through it. Look at that. <laughs> there you go. It's literally press fit, but... <laughs> it does go through. It does go through. So, so that's a good thing. That means we can get on to building our lines. I haven't done fittings like this in a while, but if memory serves me correct, lube is always the key. Oh. What I've done is, for those of you that have never worked with a fitting before, they're two piece. So you take the bottom part of the fitting off and that's where you slide your hose in. And, and then you just continue to to spin it round and round until it hits. You'll feel it'll just stop going in. And when it does, then you know you've bottomed it out. Uh. Okay. With the hose bottomed out, I usually, what I like to do is put a piece of green tape or any color tape actually on the bottom of this because when you start screwing this together, if the hose starts pushing out, then you know you're doing it wrong and you're gonna have to reset. Sometimes what I like to do is just push up on the hose yeah. while I'm screwing this together, just to give enough tension. As you can see, the tape's not moving, which is a good sign. That means we're getting good fitment good coming together. And right at the end here, this is where it gets really tight. So I just wanna make sure we're bottomed out. And we'll line it up for good measure. There you go. Tell me that's not a pretty fitting. Oh, that's pretty. Rotates, not coming apart. We're good. Well, the UPS man has not shown up yet, but lucky for us, we have a sandwich adapter from Mishimoto off the S2000 that happens to fit up with, a, uh, with the correct fitting kicking around in Pete's hoard. So we're gonna mock it up with this. We did order a uh, new Mishimoto sandwich which plate, which will be exactly the same, I think. So this should, uh, this should let us get the job done. 
and uh, not have to wait anymore on the UPS man. So we're gonna finish that up momentarily. All we have left to do is uh, putting the fittings on the end of the lines. We're gonna shorten them up a bit first, which we'll show you in a second. We also threw the, um, the front lip on here. This is a TRD replica front lip that I got from Joel at Toy Sport. It's got a good Facebook page if you're looking for uh, body parts for old Toyotas or really anything for old Toyotas. He's got an incredible hoard. Speaking of hoards, this guy's the ultimate hoarder of old Toyota stuff. So check him out. As you can see, I like Koyo Rad so much that I got a Koyo Rad for my Koyo Rad. Uh, this big boy I haven't really told you a lot about yet. It is a direct fit rad for the late first gen, so the RA24s or 28s. Um, pretty awesome. You might even say pretty rad that Koyo Rad makes a direct fit rad for this old car. I don't think anyone else in the world makes a direct fit rad for it. It's part of their HH series, so ultra high fin density for uh, extra heat uh, dissipation. Uh, got the uh, optional rad cap. I think it's a 1.3 bar rad cap. Nice thing about Koyo Rad too is they have really good quality control because they own their own factories and that lets Koyo Rad Japan make sure that they have uh, total oversight over the entire production of their products. So they're very high quality, uh, full aluminum rads, very nicely constructed, all TIG welded. It's the good stuff. Stoked to have it in here. I got all the Koyo Rad goodness in the world. Let's see Pete finish off those lines. I think that's it. All right. There you have it. That is Man. pretty clean. That is all hooked up. Ready to go. That looks Back nice. Inside. I have to do a little bit of uh, tweaking here to get that to hold there, but we're good. I like this. Yeah. You need to zip tie these together. Or yeah, anything, we maybe? will. On final assembly, we will. I'll have All to right. do a little bit of tweaking here and there. So we're calling this job we're done. done. Then? We're done, man. Let's move on to a gasket. Apparently, you forgot to put a gasket you, between the uh, may header have. and that may have happened. The block or Let's the cylinder head. Now. Header is loose, which means I can slide this gasket in. Somehow, I lost the original gasket when Moose and I tore this motor down. It's probably in my garage somewhere that I can't find it. But thanks to Battle Garage Racing Service, I ordered this online on the weekend and it showed up on Monday. And uh, it's about a, it's not a cheap gasket. I think it was about, I don't know, 40, 50 bucks, something like that. But hey, pretty amazing that a shop in California has a Beams header gasket in stock that they basically overnighted to me. So, swap this in here and it's, it's kind of a neat gasket. I, um, I mean, we've all seen metal it's a multi-layer, isn't multi -layer it? Multi-layer yeah. gasket, but I like the way the bottom holes are slotted. So you can actually mm -hmm. drop it over the bolts and then the top two are passed through. So we could have actually left the bottom bolts in and like slid this in on top of them, but we're just such gung-ho mechanics that we pulled the bolts out entirely. Let's see if I can drop this in here. That's uh, getting it too Making bent out of shape. Too yeah. man job, I got it. Pull your header back. Okay. Well, with one bolt in, I should mention that the header looks different than it did when you saw it built at Vibrant Performance, and that's because I took it to my buddy JP at Stripping Technologies. Stripping Tech, as we call them. JP did such a good job describing the coding and in the process of doing it at his shot. Let's just cut to some footage of that, and then, you, then we'll come back and you can see me struggling with these last few bolts. So you have some fancy coatings to put on this that are gonna help us keep temps under control? We do. What are those? Um, so we're going to do two coatings on this. We're gonna do an external and internal coating. Um, the external is a insulator. It's gonna help keep heat in. Okay. Um, so that obviously you don't heat your brake booster yeah. up. And uh, it, it'll act, it has a secondary effect of, you know, keeping the heat in the air, speeding up exhaust gas flow, and maybe making one horsepower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not looking for that. Yeah, but, but it's, yeah, the, the main benefit is, is lowering engine bay temperatures and maybe intake air temperatures as well. Nice, yeah. Um, so it is a thermally emissive coating as well. It uh, has a emissive value of 0 0.9, which is one would be perfect. Okay. So it's very high. Um, that's kind of a side effect um, of it being so stable at high temperatures. Uh, this particular coating is good to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Um, it, it's Sorry, it's color stable to 1800 degrees. It's functional to 2200 degrees. We're going to use an internal coating on it, which is actually one of their piston coatings. Okay. And it's an insulator as well. It's going to help keep heat inside the uh, header. 
and uh, it really deal with these bends where you get a lot of the heat build up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, straight tubing doesn't get that hot, but it's it's the bends that we really get a lot of the heat, and that'll really help. Where's the beep? The beep. The torque wrench. Yeah, that's true. I wonder what the torque spec is on this. Do I care? I bet you no, I would. I think it's. 45-ish. No, I think it's more in like the 35 range. Actually, yeah. these are pretty big bolts. These are big bolts, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I think hand spec is the best spec here. Well, I mean, you can never really fault somebody for using a torque wrench. We no. should be, but uh, it's just, just for startup and then it's all coming out and I've, we've got excuses for everything. Yeah, we do. Anyway, if you know the torque spec, put it in the comment section and uh, show us how much you Trip know us. about these beams motors. Um, yeah, I think it's tight. It's I good. It looks good. It does look good. And if you're wondering why the engine cover is off and everything, it's because we're fixing a small fuel leak, the bad O-ring on an injector. But once we get that fixed, this thing is going to start. Bold claims. So next episode <laughs> is officially the startup episode. Our buddy Nam from NV Auto is going to come and finish off the chassis wiring. We're going to finish up a couple of other small details in that episode, and then we are going to turn the key. So until then, Thanks for watching. We appreciate all the support on Patreon. You guys have really been chipping in, helping us pay the rent around here, and we really do appreciate that a bunch. If you want to support us in other ways, check out our e-store, speedacademy.shop. Sell all kinds of hard parts, get some swag, whatever you need, we'll help you find it. All right, Peter, let's go uh, have a beer and talk about how good Beams is gonna sound next episode. We decided to troll ourselves with torquing this down properly, did a little research, Actually, SQ Engineering has the factory service manual on their website. It's 50 Newton meters or 37 foot pounds. So oh, I was so close. You were close. Let's see if this thing will click. It's going to click when it shears that bolt right off. Oh, yeah. <laughs>